Now we're going to be looking at compression and limiting. We've done our EQing and we've done our gain and we've done our stereo width. So, so far our gain has just been hitting our mixed track into the limiter. We want to make it a little bit more transparent and a little gentler by adding a compressor before that limiter to deal with the body of the song. You'll remember that I was a little bit concerned about the kick on this track standing out too much after my EQ but I was pretty confident that I could tame it with a compressor and you can hear that the limiter which is going at the moment is not really um, taming that kick let's have a listen <laughs> First I just put a normal compressor on it, so um, there's ratio, just a gentle ratio of 2. I'm using RMS because I'm really trying to attack the body of that song and I'm just set the attack quite um, slow because I just want it, the limiter to handle the peak and um, I'm gonna the compressor is gonna come in to make that kick a little bit fatter let's let's have a listen Yep, that's sounding better already. But I want to show you a little mastering trick um, using a multiband compressor. This is one of your little tools as a mastering engineer. And what it does is it splits. This one just splits between low, mid and high. And you can determine the, the width and you can change the compressors on it. I like to start with actually all the same all the same compression as I would have had on a normal compressor. And now I'm doing this multi-band compression. I'll just see what the multi-band compressor sounds like. And then you can see how it's working mostly on the lows and a bit on the mids and doesn't really work on the highs at all. And from my eyes when I know that I'm hiding Here I am keeping the truth from the world I just don't want them to think that I'm a sad little girl Here I am holding back my tears again When my heart is aching definitely gives me a little bit more of a sense of space which I feel like I also achieve with that stereo enhancing on the width um really comes down to what kind of sound your client wants sometimes clients do want more of a squashed thing but I'm really liking the um space in the highs I like to hear a little bit of that dynamic I think just because it's also making the kick and the bass sound better so I'll just put on the normal compressor here and we'll do a little test <laughs>
I'm liking that better because I can hear the kick and the bass still more separately and I still want that because when you listen to this reference track that bass is quite a um the bass in that is de a definite highlight so I wanted to have the bass as a highlight in this song too so I think I've done that really happy I'm like lock it in I just wanted to also help those people who um I who don't want to shell out for the extra metering um when I was studying I was told a tip to keep the ceiling at negative two or, or negative three and from my practice um with using the, that insight meter I usually find a ceiling between negative two and negative three when I'm using the Ableton compression um and the limiter the way I do where it's just peeking through every now and then the negative two and negative three usually gives me a negative one true peak so I'm passing that tip on to you. <laughs> 